Hello and welcome to our latest tutorial. My name is Stuart Wortley. I'm one of the applications engineers here at CAD Tech Systems Limited in the UK. Over the next 15 minutes, I'm going to go through a quick overview of how I modelled this office chair for one of our customers. So, whilst visiting with uh, uh, Wrap Office contracts, they showed me a chair that they would like to show or use for a client's presentation. Unfortunately, the, the supplier of this chair only gave you the models in 3DS format, uh, which is not a very useful format for SolidWorks. Um, he wasn't sure how to, about, how to go about modelling this, and uh, I showed him very quickly the, the techniques involved. Uh, so that's where it's come from. I thought I'd just show this and share this with the rest of our customers. So there's three distinct components to this chair. We have the uh, wooden frame, we have the soft cushioning furnishings that go with it, and then we have the legs as well. So let's have a look at how I go about designing this, this wooden frame. We didn't have any CAD data from the customer, only a 3DS file, but they did have several photos and some overall dimensions. What I could do is I could use those photos of inside SolidWorks to reverse engineer the model. Now in this case we're quite lucky. We don't need to get an exact model, we just need a representation for the chair to use their layouts. So as long as it's roughly the right size and looks similar, it would be quite good for them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some basic sketches and I'm going to use some of these sketch pictures that are used from their website. We can use anything from bitmaps, GIFs, JPEGs, TIFFs, uh, PNGs and also Photoshop uh, files directly into SolidWorks. We can also use more than one image. So in this case I'm going to set up a front view and a side view to give me both the, the directions of the chair that I want to use. And the other thing is any of these images can be scaled as well. So it's going to really help me to sketch out this chair. To create the wooden frame, we're going to use a basic loft. We'll also add to this with some extrusions as well as filleting it. We shall then shell it out so it gives it the, the appearance of plywood. OK, let's have a go. OK. So all I've done so far is created a sketch and I've put a real basic outline of the sizes. Uh, these have come directly off the website. I know that the chair is 600 deep, uh, it's, uh, 750 tall and then the seat height is 450. Now I'm going to actually insert a sketch picture. Now I've actually got an icon here on my uh, toolbar but just to remind people if you haven't got this one you can also find this under Tools, Sketch Tools, Sketch Picture. Or remember, you've got the new search command tool, so you could just go in and do a search for sketch, and there's sketch picture. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to use the shortcut, and I'm going to pick this picture here, the side of our, uh, our chair. Now, it's not a great picture because there's perspective on there, but again, we're just using this to give us an idea of the actual size and the proportions of this. So let's open this up. That's going to place this sketch in. Now if we put it next to our kind of our crosshairs, you can see that the scale's not quite right. Now we used to have to kind of manually drag this around, but there's now actually a nice new tool. And here we've got our, uh, our scale tool. If I turn this corner here, that's going to set me to my height. Drag this bit roughly to the bottom of the chair. And it's a bit difficult to say where the bottom of the chair actually is because of the perspective, but something like that'll do. I can then say, well, what should this size be? So I know this wants to be 755. That's reproportioned my sketch, uh, sorry, my picture, and then I can just position this roughly, and I don't really care too much, so something like that. Now, I could just actually start sketching my uh, proper sketch around this, but I actually prefer to just leave this on its own background. It just means I can kind of have easier access to this. So I'm just going to exit this sketch. Uh, and in true Blue Peter fashion, actually, I have also created... Uh, another sketch on the front here as well. So here we can see we've got the front and we've got the side of our design. So if we look at this chair, we can see the back's quite a steep angle and then it kind of comes round. And then from the sides, it's actually almost perpendicular. There's still a bit of a slope. And also if we look here, there's a bit of a curve. Certainly you can see it more from the front view, we've got a curve. So we need to create the transition that goes from the back to the side. Now because the shape is changing, that's going to need a loft. Let's create a plane here, let's create a sketch sorry, on the front plane, a right hand plane. And let's draw out our design. 
So this is where it kind of translates over. So I'm going to use that as my uh, my uh, positioning. So it's going to come down to that point. I'm going to turn it into a bit of an arc, up into a line, and then back across. So it's just given us our basic layout. So there's our side sketch. That's sketch number one. I'm going to bring this round to the front, open a sketch on here. And very similar to what we just did, we need to create a profile going to our front. So a straight line down into an arc and then up into a line and back over. Let's just make sure this has uh, got my angles kind of roughly about right, but I'm happy with that. And we can start to see how the two shapes come together. I can hide our two photos now, just so I can see our sketches. And now we're going to create a loft between the back of the chair and the front of the chair. Now at the moment, that's very angular. So let's change our start and end constraints. And I'm going to say normal to the profile and normal to the profile. So this gives us a nice curving transition between the different shapes. Let's put some wood on this. Let's make it look kind of real to begin with. Down into our organic textures. I think we'll just get away with some beach. Onto this body. Right, now let's add some depth to the chair. So I can click on the front face, I'm going to open a sketch, and then we just need to copy this whole face. So I'm going to use the Convert Entities tool, and then we can just extrude this along until we're happy with the basic shape. have a look at that photo now you can see we need some more depth to our design so I can just keep pulling this out until I'm happy okay right let's turn this around we need to chop away these sections here and this front piece so I'm going to sketch on the side here now back on our right hand plane And then we're going to just draw the basic lines. This is a line that comes down to here and down to our front. And then we want a piece coming across at the back. We need to go lower than that. It's going to come down at an angle like so. Let's pull that line down. So it's something like that. Um, happy with this. The, uh, the picture's just getting in the way here a little bit. So let's just hide that picture. So we can see our actual geometry that we're working with. Just click and connect the dots. With this done, just do an extruded cut. through all. And to skin this, we can just use our shell and just pick the faces we don't want to have. Now that I've shelled it, I've realized that this end here is sharp and that really should be nice and rounded as well. It's very much a molded wood. Now I could start to put some fillets in here, but let's just think about this. If I roll back in my design before we do the shell, so here at this stage, if I put a fillet in along this edge, it wants to be a fair size fillet, so let's go uh, 40 mil. So it rounds those corners off. And then if we come forward again, 
that will take that into account with our shell. Okay, this is only one half. And I've just realized here I need to kind of round this corner off here. So let's just pick that edge, use the automatic uh, context menu. So I'm going to do another fillet, make this 50 mil. And then we need to mirror this to the other side. So I'm picking any of the flat faces, go to our mirror command. And we're going to use the option here for bodies to mirror. So it picks the entire shape and it's going to merge this solid in one go. Give that a tick. And there's our wooden frame. OK, with the wooden frame completed, we now need to get that soft cushion around the inside. So how are we going to do that? Uh, now, we could repeat the same process that we just did, but we'd have to create a loft and try and make it slightly small on the inside. But the actual easier way is to use some of our surfacing commands. Now, don't worry, you don't have to be a surfacing wizard to do this. All we're going to be using is the offset surface command and just literally give ourselves a little bit of a gap so it looks like the cushion is lifting off of the wooden surface. Once we've created this reference surface, we can thicken it to give us our actual size. And then all we're going to do is just to round off all the corners by using some filleting. OK, let's have a look at how we're going to do this. So we're going to start by offsetting the inside face of our frame to give ourselves the inside edge of our cushion. To do that, I'm going to use some surfacing tools. Now, I've actually got my surfacing toolbar switched on. So again, remember how to do this, right hand mouse button, and you can switch your surfacing toolbar on. And here we can see the offset surface. Uh, if, you don't do, if you don't do a lot of surfacing, then perhaps you don't need to do this. You can just, again, get it from the menu. So you're going to go Insert, Surface, Offset. Now I need to pick all of these surfaces. That's nice and simple because all I've got to do is right hand mouse button and select tangency and that'll pick all those inside faces. Now what I want to do is I want to have a little gap. We don't want the cushion sitting exactly on the wood. We want a little bit of a gap there. So you can sort of see at the moment, got like a 12 mil gap. I'm just going to make this a couple of mil, so 2 mil. That gives me my reference surface and I'm going to turn this now into a 3D model just simply by doing our insert, boss base, thicken. I need to give a thickness for this. Let's go 20 mil and give that a tick. OK, this is using our default material. Let's get some uh, let's get some cloth on there straight away. And again, I'm just attaching this to the body and straight away it's not looking too bad at all. The other thing I need to do, especially if we're going to do some rendering, you wouldn't really have these hard edges on our model, uh, certainly on a cushion. So we just need to fillet these off just to kind of round it all up and soften the actual fabric. So again, back to our fillet command. Let's pick an edge. There's no preview. That's not a surprise. Currently, we're doing a 50 mil fillet. Let's make that 5 mil. And then all we need to do is go around and pick all the edges. Of our model. Okay, that will do. Okay, on to the final part now. We just need to create these legs. Now they are slightly interesting because they uh, they crisscross all over in the uh, the three D space. So what we want to do is we're going to have to do some kind of 3D sketching. Now, if you've never done a 3D sketch before, or if you have done a 3D sketch before, you'll know how it can be quite a, an interesting time, especially with the sketch flying off in different directions or really understanding where you are sketching in the 3D space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I would go about creating something like this using a 3D sketch. And I do it by using construction sketches first to build up my major sketch. Once that's done, we can then just simply sweep along the actual 3D sketch and we're going to show the new 2016 enhancement with the sweep command with the fact we can get it to automatically generate the profile that we want to use. OK, let's go and see these legs. Right, let's just remind ourselves what these legs look like. So if I show our sketch again, 
so we can see our original um, our, our photo that we're kind of working this off we can see the legs crisscross at the bottom they kind of slightly come out slightly to the front and then they're very sloped at the back again kind of lining up with the very back of the chair so that gives me a kind of an idea of where I'm working to I could probably uh, oh, actually I'll use this sketch now so I'm going to create my first sketch and it's going to be our reference sketch at the bottom here so I'm going to pick that point and open uh, so I pick that line and I'm going to create uh, some reference geometry here a plane at that point perpendicular to that line I can now open a sketch on here so I'll get this straight on and I can draw my crisscross line so I know that I want it to come out slightly to the front and I want it to come out kind of to the back here roughly in line with the end of the seat here so it's kind of coming there and coming across to there and that is going to be perfect to get me my bottom line let's close that sketch down now I want to create another plane here because sort of see that these these arms just kind of sit under the belly of the seat but let's just uh, just hide this sketch now we don't need that anymore so I'm going to grab our control at the top plane a little cheat for you here if you hold down your control key you can just drag and copy a new plane and I'm guessing that'll be about 60 mil or thereabouts below the edge of the seat so now let's open a sketch on this new plane and this time we want our kind of returns that are going onto our seat so just a bit of a line here and obviously this one comes back over and it comes back over somewhere over here don't worry if it doesn't kind of make sense at this point it'll kind of all become clear in a couple of minutes so I've got two different sketches one just underneath the seat one at the bottom here now I'm going to do a 3D sketch the 3D sketch is slightly hidden under our 2D sketch command I'm going to go to 3D so to do this I'm going to pick that line there and I convert entities so it's copying it over into my 3D sketch I'm going to do the same on these two lines here now I'm going to play connect the dots so that one comes down to that point over there and this one comes down to that point so we don't have to try and draw that in 3D I've got all my alignment done obviously you can see that it's very sharp on those bends so let's do a sketch fillet here probably 25 or something like that again click on the corners I'll just make that slightly bigger 30 mil And there we go we've got our path now that we can sweep our shape along let's hide some of these planes and this is what I was saying about the new tool so go into our features go to our sweep just going to pick our path so it's picking the 3d sketch but we're going to use the uh, the automatic circular profile we probably want something like a 12 mil or something like that radius give that a tick and that's created as our legs in fact it's created as one half of our legs so what I'm going to do pick the central plane and again we'll just finish this off with a mirror the body we're going to mirror is the legs and let's put some chrome on there get it on both sides And then just finish off by hiding a few sketches. Maybe putting this into perspective. A bit of ambient occlusion on. And there we go. We've got our finished chair. So today's presentation has been about the modelling techniques involved in creating this chair. But if I was using this in a real world example, then I'd probably finish this off by adjusting the wood textures, getting the scaling right, and perhaps adding a bit of an edge wood trim around the uh, the side of the wooden frame. I would probably, uh, well, sorry, probably, I definitely would add a mate reference to the base of our chair. So that when I'm bringing this into a, uh, an environment, bringing it into a scene or an office layout, it just automatically snaps to the floor. And that will save me a lot of time. 
and of course I then save the completed share aware my design library just to make it nice and easy so I can just drag and drop this and use this in lots of other projects. Okay, thank you for watching. That was modelling a quick chair by myself, Stuart Wortley at cadtech.com. Um, if you have any more questions, then please feel free to get in touch.